Hello, good, good evening. Good, good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. How are you doing? Welcome to Soka TV. Welcome back to Soka TV. As you can see, we have a new studio. Yeah. Things Look. looking up, things looking up, things looking up. Give a like, share, uh, and follow for the new studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that for it? No way. <laughs> All right, great. For those of you who tuned in last week, we had quite, quite, quite a discussion. Yeah. Quite the discussion. It's so much so that we decided that we had to continue the, the conversation. You know? Had to, had to, had, had to, to, had to. Now, last week's panel, we had Victor Edwards, Abeo Jackson, Mohammed Muakil, was here? Roma Spencer. Roma Spencer, Wendell Man Warren. And for, for a very a short time, a couple seconds, of seconds, we had <laughs> Dr. The Honorable Basio Pandey. <laughs> <laughs> so, the topic for today is being continued from last week. It is Theatre of the Oppressed and Theatre of the Resistance, the role of art and theater in social, social reform and, yeah social reform right so just to give a recap of what happened that was weird <laughs> to give a recap of what happened last week well first of all roma spencer when she was speaking she gave a recap of how our own forms of resistance through the art evolved independently of what is traditionally known as Theater of Resistance, and then we had when the man Warren speaking to that, and all these practitioners themselves, they have their own form of art, bringing a very also bringing a very meaty mm -hmm. meaty contribution in our history mm -hmm. and how our history of oppression has influenced our our theater mm -hmm. and the theater of resistance as well. Indeed, I, I think it was Abel <laughs> Jackson who said, "Well, she started off with." Liz, our father, our company in South with um, on the choice Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And in learning the own folk forms, especially in our culture that came out of colonialism, that in itself is a form of resistance, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're ready to bring in this week's panel. Yeah, some fresh perspectives on the same discussion. And hopefully we could come to somewhat of a, a conclusion, at least for now. Um, on this on this topic. So first up tonight, we have 
a graduate of the University of the West Indies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An artist, a singer, a dancer, an actor. She has everything. She directing. She doing everything. Hey, she's also the granddaughter of Mama and Two Springer, of Mother and Two Springer. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Shania Springer. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Pretty welcome. Mm -hmm. Nice man. Anything additional you want to share with our, our viewers tonight? Let me get uh, to know about you yourself. Bit. You know what you anything you've done. Anything you'd like to share at all? Okay. Well, I've been performing pretty much my entire life. Started off with drumming. Um, the first memory I have of drumming is at the age of one for Winnie Mandela, Nelson Nelson Mandela's wife. Um, and then I just went on from there dancing with Malik folk, folk, Junior Folk Performing Company um, was a fully later on. Now I'm still a member of Wasa Fully and I perform with Ida Kader Group Limited, which is my family's company. You just brush over drumming for Winnie Mandela like it's nothing. Okay, we talk more about that. I'm very interested in that story. Very. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next on the channel is. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, all right. Was it? Ah, oh, yes. Next on the panel is a man who is well affiliated with arts in action. I can't say the story. Well, ah, right. <laughs> a man well affiliated with Arts in Action. I know him as a drummer in church. And later in life, I discovered I discovered that he was in the theater. I was like, oh, well, okay, nice, nice, nice. So I am pleased to bring in Mr. Brendan Lakai. Welcome, hey, Brendan, welcome, welcome. welcome. Mike, yeah. Yeah. Um, Brendan, unmute your mic, please. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, boy, Anneli, Anneli, um, mash up the show there, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anneli, An 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 do the whole thing in mine. Thanks for what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. Well, for for anybody in the, in the viewership that um has the unfortunate pleasure of not knowing who Brendan Lakai is. Um, maybe you'll do a better job at um tell us about yourself, tell the viewers what what what, what you have, yeah. what you do. You know, I think I, I think to start off, uh, I have to say it, it is a uh, knowing knowing who is backstage as well, it is a, a department of creative and festival arts night tonight. That's so I can say that right. <laughs> so I am, I, am a, I am a graduate of the department of creative and festival arts, just as Ashanaya here. I'm also um a lecturer in theater at, at the department. Um, I am the artistic director of the Arts in Action, currently the artistic director of the Arts in Action unit. I, Congratulations. Yeah, I had it with, with, with my, my executive, my artistic program manager, Ms. Rayshon Pierre. Yeah, and another new graduate and a graduate of the DCFA. I'm also yeah, just like Shania, I'm, I'm, I'm a member of, of her family's uh, company, educator as well. Um, you name it, you name it. Um, I could tell you too, also, Brendan Man Warren was, is, is a, one of the key people and one of my mentors growing up as a young artist. Yeah, Wendell and, under the Bagas company, that kind of thing. So that's a little bit about me. All right, nice, man. thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, man. All right. Next up, next up on our panel, we have, um, as Brendan <laughs> indicated, you know, it, it, it was a, 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 a only a recent revelation that is a is a DCFA um, night apparently. You know, so up next we have uh, uh, another graduate of of, of the, create, the creative and festival arts UE, um, also a secondary school teacher in drama and theater arts, pursuing his. Um, his studies, his, his postgraduate studies. I call him, I call him by the doctor. You know, I don't know, I'm not too sure how he feel about it, but he didn't really complain. So I'm going to introduce him as the doctor, speaking life and it. Welcome, happy welcome, doctor, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Simeon Mudu. Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, Dr. Mudu. How are you tonight? <laughs> <laughs> not doctor yet, not doctor yet. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh. 
Oh, kelihatan dia tu. Tak sempat nak tak sempat. Betul tak? Betul tak? Betul tak? So, so welcome, welcome to Soka TV Theater segment. Um, what you. anything additional you'd like to share? Uh, with the, with our viewership, anything you've done, anything um that you might be known for, I kind of hint in here, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, other than performing since I was in my mother's womb, um, I when I worked with at Naprima College for three months, I carried the boys to drama festival, and. For 2016 and 2017, both in Trinidad and for Caribbean Drama Festival in Antigua, we walked away with a total of 19 awards, inclusive of um, most original script, um, directing, music, Assam, among other things. Yeah, and uh, I've, I've done several things around the theater from stage hand to, to production stage manager, to producing, to the writing, directing, acting, yeah, several things, several things. Yeah, and, he, and, and yeah, and he's a he's a job. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I'm, also, I'm also a student of Bois and Rope Job. Ah, <laughs> he is also the man who dragged me yeah. and people to the best village. Yeah. I did not the best village. Yeah. 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 I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I suppose as, as I hear, uh, as we on that, I, I should say that both on my maternal and paternal side of the family, um, we have six fighters in the blood. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a legacy boy child. Nice one. Nice <laughs> one. Nice. Okay. Uh, um, All right. Okay. We're still waiting for one of the uh, two on one screen. Two on one screen. Apparently. Yeah, two on one screen. Um, to log in. So, uh, in the meanwhile, I would introduce a panelist who was here last night, and we are pleased to welcome. Not last night. Uh, last week. Last week. <laughs> last night. Last show. You know. Yeah, the last show. Yeah. So we are pleased to welcome him back, Mr. Victor Edwards. I can see him laughing from backstage. <laughs> good night. Good night, Mr. Edwards. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Nice to be here again. And I'm all these young people. It be interesting to hear these yeah, young yeah. people have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I take a lot. I take a lot. Yeah, I remember when Brandon and I remember when Brandon walking to DCFA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I remember. Simeon shouldn't be ashamed to say that I taught him in school. Oh yeah! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! That's your look. Look at that! 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 And that the forum that he he, he he boasts that he won 19 awards in that I am the person who established that Caribbean secondary school provided a forum for all of these young people to, 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 to spread their wings and so on, you know? Thank nice you for one, that, nice. thank you for that. And but before sorry, sorry, mm -hmm. where are you? Before you are um, before we went live, you were mentioned that you were of the original the original course of when DCFA opened in 1986, I was one of the, of the first cohorts there. As a matter of fact, it was a three-week course that was uh, sponsored by the Secondary School Drama Association under the presidency of Jean Miwa. So hey, we had this, yeah, yeah, a three-week directing and, and writing course that was run by um, by Ron Gibbons and Ikigo Wilkinson, I think Edgar White was there. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, back in in yeah, 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 yeah. It's so bad. You know. <laughs> no, no, it's bad at all. bad at all. It's one of the most um, fulfilling experiences that I had, that intensive three week course. You know, and, uh, since then I've done several things. Two theaters, uh, scholarships, and and and, and um, integrated arts, and so on. But that first three weeks um, experience really, really stayed with me. The kinds of things that I learned as a young person, you know, then I was young, eighty-six. I mean, that's you know, many, many years ago. Yeah. Yeah, before and I was. See that the young people like Brendan and Simeon and they who have come through. Um, the DCFA that they're the ones now who really in charge and running the show, you know, they, they've taken responsibility 
to carry on the legacy of what was laid down so early. It, it, at a time when, at a time when a, a lot of guesswork was still being done, you know what I mean? Um, the building where the office was, the old, the old building there. When, 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 when the DC office started, it was just the one building by the mango tree where we had the, um, where we had the, um, the, the, the black, black box, the black, the black box, and a white man used to be living in the next building until, well, they get rid of heat, and then the thing expanded to the board buildings and so on and so on and so on. All right, all right. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Um, Victor, as you are a man well steeped in the education <laughs> system and in, and in theater, etc., last week we, uh, as engaging as the discussion was, they only touched very little on the yeah. formal definition of theater of the oppressed. Uh -huh. Are you? Can you tell the audience a little bit more what is the technical understanding of what theater of the press is? Well, I, 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 all right. Others could weigh in as well. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me just um. I, I made a statement last week, and I don't think it will fully explored um that the, the statement that I made where I said that 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 theater and politics you you cannot you cannot um pull them apart. And maybe when we talk about politics in Trinidad and Tobago, we talk about party politics. But we need to throw that out of the window altogether. The theater of the press is a theater of politics where the concerns of the people, of the nation, of the citizenry, and so on, whatever, whatever offends us, whatever we feel oppressed by, is expressed through the theater. And people like Freire and Bo Boal and so on, they have they, they, they have actually created some steps by which this theater could be produced. So it, it's really about, and, and Brendan would know that, that people like Soink and so on had a theater called Guerrilla Theater. Yeah. You know, where they would just, it's almost like invisible theater, they would just appear on the street corner and start to do the theater. And from the time they hear this time, you know, somebody say, hey, look, police come in, they just pack up everything and they're gone. They're gone. You see? Yeah. Because but, but, there was an issue in the society that needed to be ventilated, that needed to be shared. And the responsibility is really for the artists, the people involved in the arts, whether it's drumming, whether it's singing, dancing, whatever it is, to, 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 to express, you know, um, what that feeling of oppression is. So that the rest of the, the the body politic could really share, and not only share in terms of seeing, but in terms of then becoming a part of that resistance as well. As right you now, you we should have things yeah. here they want to no, add. I, I I I mean in in. In, in teaching educative theater, a program at the Department of Creative Festival Arts, which was, was really shaped by, by the, the mandate of, of the department uh, under Roll Gibbons and so on, in terms of where there's a, there's a, 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 a strict uh, understanding of a relationship between the artists and the community, and the community feeding the artists and the artists feeding the community and so on, in a kind of social process, yeah? Um, it, 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 it has informed how we enter into this understanding of the, the theater as a, as a tool for social reform. I, I, I could tell you in my research and in my interaction with, with people like, like Victor Edwards, who, are, who I have to say is, is, is like a mentor to us younger ones, people like Tony Hall, right? Tony Hall is a man who said that when Augusto Boal came and, and was demonstrating his theater of the oppressed in Canada. Tony said, but what the hell is this? I, I was doing that already, long time, right? In, 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 in um, popular theater and, and that kind of thing. And, and he used to laugh at, at that, eh? God bless his soul. Yes, and, and then there's an understanding under the mandate that the department has, has, has given us and will be trying to, to carry on that we already had a kind of resistance theater, and, and namely one is, is the carnival. And I'm watching two 
ajab ajab mania and ajab balasi send down by long next to Tristan right and talk both all in in his button paint right but but and, and end to and I'm watching Shania, Shania Springer and her grandmother who spoke to those things about about the carnival and the, and the traditional carnival being a form of theater of resistance right um and to spring us points to the baby doll in in Kambole, right where the baby doll takes up the the, the mantle of, of of championing all those young girls who have been um been been been, been used by these plantations these, these white rich white planters coming into the in the backyard and making all these young black girls pregnant and leaving them with their children and so on and not 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 providing for them the, the first that be dad was not a black person you know the first dead be dad was a plantation french whoever you understand what i'm saying right so guys that that's the kinds of, of understanding we have and then we have things like ram Leela, where you you're able to to present your 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 community's belief your heritage your belief system in a, in a in a situation or in a, a space that, that doesn't allow it the colonial powers don't care about them thing you know you understand then, yeah? yeah 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 you went into theater of resistance yeah, yeah and yeah um you went into theater of resistance just now and as i mentioned yeah. last week i as a man who watched my put and jump in i don't have the technical understanding of mm -hmm what these things mean and i imagine that hey welcome to Riza. hi hi i see you get through right i see that um where was i let's get back to that whole comment yeah like, uh, you, you, yeah oh yes I, I i don't have the formal education in terms of what exactly is theater of resistance and i imagine that some of our audience might not be on the same page as well so i don't know if you can oh, speak more what is the formal understanding of theater oh. of resistance well i'm just i'm just taking off for what what victor was saying in terms of when you talk about you want to find out about what is theater of the oppressed right theater of the oppressed in terms of how it was modeled yeah. by by so Sorry, theater of the oppressed and right. theater of resistance. Let's to continue from where Victor was starting. And he's right, it is a political, it is a political um movement, it is a political model, a, 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 a set of practices, steps to arrive at a kind of critical understanding of the world, right? Fiery in his his seminal work, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, all right, um, pointed to um an understanding that um in order to to, to, to to deal with with some of these serious problems that are what's happening in communities and so on you have to engage and involve first not only the 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 stakeholders not only the people on the ground who were experiencing the oppression and so on you have to involve all the stakeholders in in dialogue and it's not just where i come and tell you hey this is the problem do something about it but it's all a communal process, a social process where everybody sit down and and talk and share what I know. Yeah. The, the thing is that the, the theater of the aristocracy makes the masses very passive. We just sit down and we watch, you understand, and we laugh. But we're not actively involved in instituting any changes. For instance, I mean, you know, Brendan more voted it because he practices it all the time forum theater where spectators are you know uh, are invited to, to offer solutions and even invited on stage to participate so that you can take the solutions that you offer back into the the the, the, rest, the, the, the community so that the, the all of the community become activists i mean not yeah. just passive recipients of what the aristocracy and those leaders and so on say and we just become um sheep as it were yeah the community helping themselves to, to deal with the problems right and yeah. what what Boal did is, is locate well give you the step but there was always a process of locating theater and locating performance 
even back back to the days of enslavement and so on, where, where people were using the art as a means of liberation, emancipation, etc. Yeah? yeah and, and if I were to add, Tristan, um, I don't think it's necessary to know all the technical uh, aspects of um, uh, theater of the oppressed or, or resistance theater to understand the essence of what it is. Um, as Brendan um, indicated earlier, we have been doing it uh, from the very beginning uh, as a colonial society um, through our carnival that later became institutionalized by the government and these kind of things. But uh, before the road, the road was made to walk and we walk it without whether we had permission or not. Right, and we resisted uh, um, whatever was uh, oppressing us at that point in time. Right, we we had something to say and we said it. Yeah, I, I don't think um, Korean people really need to to uh, have this understanding of this is exactly how we do it. Um, I think innately we have found ways and we continue to find ways to do it, whether we use a formal theater or we do it on our own on the road. I think um, it's something that we have our appreciation for, whether we know all the technical terms or not. Well, the point that Simeon made, can you remember, uh, is a point that I, I, I made last week, in the sense that all West Indian people are really oppressed people. Because once we have, once we, once we were under that, that, that regime of colonialism and so on, Remember, their, 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 their aim was always to, to, to teach us their language, to teach us their religion, to, to, to teach us their values, to, 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 to eradicate, to whitewash, to lactify, so that we, become, we became like them. But there were always pockets of resistance okay. through the history of the West Indies. You'd find that, that the people resisted all of these onslaughts by the by the by the, the by, by the colonials to make us uh, like them, and that is how that is how people, West Indian people, retain, maintain a lot of the, the a, a lot of the, the performative um, arts and so on, um, the ancestral memory and so on. These are things that, that, that um, we've held on to and continue to practice. And now that we're supposed to be free, we're supposed to be independent and so on, our acts of resistance have become acts of celebration in a way, so that we begin to celebrate ourselves as we should see ourselves. Yeah. All right, Patel, I'm going to pause there for a second because we have special. somebody very special backstage. He done warm up hunting. You ready to jump on the stage? <laughs> Oh, but more than Marshall, you ready for that stage? Hey, <laughs> I see you laughing back to here. So, ladies and gentlemen, we want to introduce, we will stick no time, we allow him to, to talk about himself a bit. My teacher, a boss man of us, is you like to introduce, hey, the one, the only MG, not Marcus Garvey, but Marvin George. Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Good evening. 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 Good <laughs> All good? Everybody good? Everybody good? Yeah. 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 For the folks who don't know you, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Who don't know? Right. Well, me and you know, all. I don't know from Facebook, I know. All right. I'm right. one, one since I'm Lucia last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so tell the audience a little bit about Marvin you. George. My name is Marvin George. I'm, I'm a Trinidadian living and working in Jamaica. I am... Um, I'm a theater maker, um, and all the people and all the people inside this conversation here, I've I've spent time working with at some point in my life, some longer than others. Like for like like for Brendan, I worked with him for almost a quarter of his life. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, seriously, yeah, yeah. almost quarter of his life. Yeah. Um, 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, 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 like, like, like Brendan, I'm also uh, a member of Arts in Action. Um, creative Arts graduate. Lalon's teacher. Um, Victor's, Victor's actor. <laughs> uh, Simeon's teacher, Shania's big cousin. <laughs> so um, we just have no relationship. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't and I and I, and I, func and I currently I, I currently I, I currently serve in Jamaica as a dean at the School of Drama at the Manly College. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Very glad to have you. Very yeah, glad yeah, to have yeah, you. yeah, 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 so, yeah. You came in the conversation. We were talking about. Well, first we were kind of defining theater of the oppressed, theater of resistance, okay. and then it went on into how, in the Caribbean, our own art forms evolve out of systems of oppression and forms of resistance. Um, yeah. As someone who is from Trinidad and in Jamaica, can you? Tell us what are some of the similarities and differences in terms of the art that evolved out of the system in both Trinidad and Jamaica. Yeah, you're, me, yeah. you're asking about Jamaica specifically. Oh, so, sorry, go again. You broke up a little bit. Say it one more time. The relation specifically, or are you looking for a comparison? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, all, right, all right. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. I get you. Yeah, all right. Um, I think I think the well, the, the foundation is for the conversation is is quite clear. Um, I, I think that the the thing to, right. to, to to frame all of it, we probably we probably have to make sense of um of what the Caribbean is, and um and perhaps why art in the Caribbean is so linked is so linked to the idea of resistance. Um, it it, it it's not it's not dissimilar anywhere barrels in the region, I suspect, right? Uh, and that is to say that if you have a history, as, the, as is the history of the Caribbean, where people are, where people are displaced and, um, and are brought into a place where they will serve as commodity rather than as people, and where, and where freedom is part and parcel of, what, of what, they, what they desire, and where building a civilization is what they must do. For the time that you know as the opposing force in a situation that makes them that suggests that they might not be human then every single fiber of their being is going to be involved in the fact of resistance or the act of resistance that's just how it goes okay. nobody on the face of the earth that likes being enslaved um so that you find that that whatever the art is the art of the people has its own existence. Um, theater, theater of the oppressed is in very many ways a kind of a kind of theater. And, and by that, what I mean, want to say is that there are a host of there are a host of indigenous and formal theaters in the Caribbean that don't have to recognize themselves as theater to, 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 to be remembered or to be acknowledged at the point of performance as an act or a fact of resistance. So by saying that, what I mean is, Ramlila could be considered a theater of resistance. Jose could be a theater of resistance. Kumina in Jamaica could be a theater of resistance, notwithstanding the fact of whatever it might be performed for, right? So Ramila might be occasioned by an auspicious time in the calendar. But the fact of remembering the homeland in a, in, in, in a culture that insists on forgetting is an act of resistance. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, the, it's, yeah. it's, the, it's the same, for example, for stick fighting, for, for Orisha practice, any one of those practices. I'm not even talking about theater in the formal sense. I'm talking simply about traditional indigenous modes of performance that people identify as their own theater before somebody come and talk about something named theater. Yeah. And when those yeah. things are performed, whenever they are practiced, once you find yourself in the particular context that we find ourselves in, 
every single one of those is an act of resistance. That's some all. All. Yeah. Because yeah, that's that was the point. source of the region. Yeah, that yeah. was the point that was going on when you, uh, you asked me to come, come back in terms of Ramdila yeah. and the other traditional. Yeah? Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I think a, a particular, um, a particular, I don't want to call it an event, is a, what do you call it? I guess it's an event, it started, it's rooted in our history, and it is a form of resistance, and that's the Cambolay. And we have someone here who can talk a little bit more about the Cambolay, that's Shania Springer. So, Shania, can you tell me or just a little bit about where the Cambolay came from? Um, and how it has evolved over time, and what does it mean as a practitioner in the Kambule? What does it mean for you to be part of that art form? So uh, okay. So, um, the Kambule has all elements of everything we practice the carnival today, um, all traditional carnival arts, all um, you find Orisha practice in there. The barricade, the jamets of the barricade, the stick fighters, jab, everything. Um, Kambule, in Guinea's other sons, Maureen Warner Lewis uh, mentions that Kambule, spelled K A M B U L E, means procession. So that is the spelling of the play Kambule reenactment by N2 Pearl Springer. Before, um, before Miss N2 scripted it, Tony Hall and John Cupid practiced it on the streets in front of All Stars. So for many years, it was done in front of All Stars, Spaniard. And um, it was scripted. It had a lot of groups, a lot of best village groups um, participating in it and all of that. Kambule is Kambule was in 1881. The Jose riots, the Kambule riots was in 1881. The Jose riots was also in 1884. And both riots were battling against Captain Baker, who wanted to put an end to all indigenous, all tradition, traditional art and practice. Good time, Ron, then. You want to match up everybody? I said, he's just a tyrant, then he's just, just mashing up everybody, think so? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, before we even think that, you know, what is resistance or, you know, everything we did as indigenous African people is a resistance. Um, playing drum is a form of resistance. Dancing, our dance is a form of resistance. Anything we did, um, Hindu, Muslim, Orisha, cultural, traditional, spiritual practice is a form of resistance. So the Kambule script written and directed by Anto Springer talks about all these different forms inside of the, so you have the main action of the Kambule riot itself, but you also have the history of all our people inside of there, which is um, told through the story of the Peru, which um, Brendan plays one of them. I don't know if you want to add there, uh, Brendan, yeah, and okay. talk about I your okay. experience okay. as Peru. Let's play a little two piece here no, for no, no. Ah. the add to the discussion, if, if if I might. Um, Walcott. You know, Walcott happened to be passing through Central. He didn't even stop when the Ramlila was taking place down um down in Pier Road in the back there. Um, he didn't stop to see it, but he made an interesting observation. He said that the people who were involved in playing the Ramlila were not actors. He called them devotees. And I want to throw that into the mix in terms of all of our acts of resistance. That it, it is 
the repetition of, of, of the performative art that really helps us to, to, to maintain and remember, act of remembrance as they were, uh, uh, of our traditional beliefs. It strengthens, you know, the, the resolve in us, you know, the, the warriorhood, the, 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 that, 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 that strength and, and, and growth and figure that we have to continue to, to, to really um, practice the things that belong to us. So the repetition of it, every time we do the candle, every time we do a dance, every time we sing a song, every time we repeat a poem or read a story, whatever it is, it is as if we are re-devoting, re if that's a word, you know, we're devoting ourselves, reapplying ourselves to the traditional uh, beliefs and practices of our ancestors. And, and not just an acting of it. Right, and it was about time. Yeah, yeah. No, she no, the, and I my my experience with uh, with with Campbell is is something and that I've always had to um, reflect on and and, and every every Campbell every Campbell that we've tried. I mean, um, I I don't think that that um, the the performance in, in in on the Carnival Friday is is understood and, and in terms of by by the wider public of why what we are attempting to do what what is what is what 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 was the intention behind it uh, and um i believe i believe that we have to first recognize and and and, and talk about that if you're talking about forms of resistance and so on um the idea of 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 doing a, a kind of passion play kind of of um, presentation within a, a space where the act, it actually took place, right? Where it's noted in history that the, the riots happened, right? On the spot, near the spot, near the street and so on, and around the area. And in the midst of possibly those people who are, are descendants of those, those individuals took part in it. It's a, it's a different thing. You, Telling, retelling, or reconnecting people to to a memory that is important, a memory of resistance, a memory of reclamation, right? Um, is, is, is an important act, and um, it's not only Campbell is not only I think the under the hand of of only people like like and two and so on. They are Victor, but they also have, there's there's the work of of Gibbons, Royal Gibbons, there's the work of um, if he will, if he will, Wilkinson, um, and, and many more who uh, attempt to, to to create memory, yeah. Um, and maybe Marvin could speak to as well um, his his work with with Juve IT. And you, I know you all mentioned at the very beginning that 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 initial link to, to the Haitian Revolution and talk and speaking about the, the importance of the Haitian Revolution. Um, things, those kinds of, of initiatives, um, Juve IT, which is a, and I, I won't go too far, I'll let Marvin talk about that, which is a, 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 a Juve ban, a mass ban, a mass centered organization and looks at, at, at performance and traditional masquerade and so on as a means of, of speaking to the needs of, of the community as well. Right. If if Marvin shares about that, we also get a wider and understanding of what Shania was talking about in terms of N 2s work, N two as a as a as a playwright, and I, and I think as a woman writing about men things. Yeah, what well, well, is traditionally understood as men: Kambule, stick fighting, man talk, warriorhood, all them kind of thing. Yeah, which is which is a it's an interesting kind of dynamic. And, and that kind of history as well as heritage speaks to our own heritage because woman, woman warrior is a, is a hell of a thing. And this will talk about resistance. Eh? Yeah. So, so I, I, I if, I about, can, yeah. if I can interject before Marvin starts, that um, thing yeah. about woman as warrior is a very serious thing. You know, this, this whole idea that warriorhood is man thing is crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Shania, Shania, yeah. Before yeah. you continue, 
before you continue, right? Um, we kind of organically going into our next guiding question that I have, which is great, which is great. But I want to just present it for the for the sake of the viewers. You know, uh -huh. um, the, the question, the guiding question was about asking you guys to speak about within your knowledge or whatever you've learned about our history of oppression. Mm -hmm. Um, and as if you could go back as far as probably where Shania is going right now, as far as the Haitian Revolution, right? Um, to address our instances of oppression and resistance. So that was really, I just don't want to be redundant and bring back the question and we already go in there. So you could continue, okay. Shania. Thank you. So what I was going to speak about first, and it's nice that they talk about the Asian Revolution as well, because I could touch a little on the woman essence, and I happen to be the only female, the only woman right now on the panel. <laughs> um, so there is an, uh, there's a story in Ifa that talks about, you know, every religion or spirituality has a creation story. And it talks about all these masculine energies coming to earth to clear, to clean, to create something, you know? And they left behind the female energy. And they think, you know, man, power, man, we can do all of this. We don't need no woman, nothing here. And nothing was going right for them. So they had to go back to Orumela and find out why it is this not working out why this why you know nothing happening and uh, orumala asked them well where is the woman energy where is oshun they leave oshun behind you know she doing woman things cooking cleaning so they say no orumala said no you have to have oshun there so Oshun is that essence of warrior. Oshun is also that female energy that take Ogun out of the forest to clear and to clean. Ogun is the warrior of iron, cutting and clearing all obstacles and paths. Oshun was the one that guided him out of the forest to do what he have to do. So that essence of female energy is always important in everything. In the Kambule, we channel Sophie Bella, who morphs into ocean or manifests the ocean energy. Sophie Bella was a powerful, sick woman. Without Sophie Bella, Joe Prenge, Joe Tamana, all of them couldn't do what had to be done. In the Haitian Revolution, you had Cecil Fatima, the Mamba, who was important and key to walking that that obia that voodoo to make sure that they were successful in their revolution so you can take it away marvin <laughs> yeah marvin where i was going back to you was to talk about juve it i, I think i'm going to go back to the idea of it yeah it's more or less the same thing so look it, it, it back to the idea of look it back to the idea of what sorry juve it do the IT and the, the question about history and oppression and resistance. Okay. All right. Okay. No problem. No problem. Um, sh 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 what sh where Shania went there is, is quite valuable. Um, both in terms of the conversation, start there, both in terms of the conversation of the importance of female energy, and um, and and that in and that in older in 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 older cosmology, in older worldviews, the that, that that kind of compartmentalizing. Of what is man work and what is woman work is not so um is not so it's not defined in those ways um it, it, it is for that reason exactly what she has said there about the importance of of, of co-energies moving in the cambule um, um ha had to have been critical for the cambule to be a success and similarly the point about cecile fatima in the um in the in the, in the, in the haitian revolution the voodoo woman right um and she, and she, and we could probably even go further back that that the first that that perhaps the first act of resistance coming out of Haiti that we that we probably have record of might also be a woman in the person of in the person of Anakauna who is a, a Taino a Taino chief right so that so that 
I, I, I want to I want to take information I left us about the, the importance of energy, right? About about energy and balance and so on in the fulfillment of, of, of whatever these objectives of resistance might be. That's part one. And part two is that the thing about Haiti is that um, we, we, we talk a lot about um, about America and uh, like we, we recognize America's presidents as the freedom, the, the leaders of the free world and so on. But um, but 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 the fact is that that in whatever year America declared independence, that independence was not for black people, right? Uh, June 19th, which incidentally is Labor Day in Trinidad, June 19th, 1865 is Juneteenth in America. 1865, as the year for declaring emancipation for black people in America, is even later than the years we declared emancipation for black people in the Caribbean. Notwithstanding whatever the problems were, consider consider seriously what we're going on here with dates and times, huh? that, that, that they are not where we are. Now, when Haiti declares independence in 1804 and promulgates their um, 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 constitution in 1805, with the man who, who some historians choose to remember as the savage, the one named Dessaline, they choose to remember as the savage. That constitution states that everybody here is black. Okay? Now, that is not white supremacy or fundamentalism. That is the only way that the world could reverse a new world that is premised on white supremacy. Everybody has to be black. Everybody has to be black or blackened to move forward in any idea of equality. That's the only way. There's no other way. If it's white supremacy ruling the world, the only way to overturn it, turn the whole world upside down. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, it's not simply blue. It's Jab Molassi logic. It's, it's Jab Molassi logic. Mass. Turn the whole world upside down. She cannot, she cannot popularize it. They know what they're doing. Don't follow them. They know what they're doing, right? <laughs> so white supremacy could only totally be overturned. Yeah. It could only be yeah man, it could only be overturned if the if the if the view of the world is black. The constitution also says that no white man go and get it, you could Google it and think it online. No white man will ever set foot on this land again and become a slave master. That constitution says that. America own, I don't know what it say, but the Asian <laughs> constitution says so. Since 1805, 60 years before America had the confidence to say free, free black people for whatever reason, for whatever problems they were having, and still not having it worked out properly, hence John Crow and the rest and the rest and the rest and the rest. And now Black Lives Matter. Haiti is where freedom begins. That is the fact of the world that we have to accept. The fact of the new world that we have to accept. Haiti is where freedom begins. That's point one. Point two is that every spot of land in the Caribbean has a masquerade tradition. For Trinidad, we don't see any distance between carnival and mass. We call carnival is a composite. When we say carnival, it means mass and something and something and something and something, right? Because Carnival's logic is and, 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 right? So Carnival is all kind of things. But you may not be a Caribbean and have the same response. Like if you say Carnival in Jamaica, it might be interpreted in the same, very same ways, right? But every single spot of land understands what masquerade and the procession in the road is. And that logic is not, is not alien either to Haiti, meaning the idea of the procession in the road as a space for emancipation, as a space for the expression of liberation, of freedom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or even without any of that consciousness, the practice of what it is to be yourself. The practice of what is yours. It so happens that those, those all of those things are lodged in performances that work not indoors, but outdoors. The spaces where a lot of these things are remembered and performed and processed. And I mean, both in its link to procession and in its link to reasoning, making out, working out, right? Processed. 
those things are outdoor events. So you find that if we're talking about a metaphor or a method that speaks to the ways in which we understand what is liberatory or emancipatory, the fact of the masquerade or the processional performance in the yard or in the open air, wherever these things happen, is where these acts of liberation are mostly performed. So to very not a far-fetched idea. It's just precise in terms of its naming. Because Juve, as New Day, is metaphor for what for whatever that overturning is, that emancipation is. Because Juve has resonance for all of us in Trinidad at that time when you, the individual, come out in the road and do what the hell you want. Meaning, you're not even concerned that Juve might be somehow a corruption of somebody's French word. In fact, we don't really care because it's our word now. Right? And we have already linked our own meanings to the fact of the expression of Juve. Our own collective freedoms or our own individual freedoms because man could come in the world and play their own mass and have no business with nobody band. And still end up in Tree Canal the same way. That, that, that is, that's how serious that that road is with, with, with mass. And IT, A-Y-I-T-I, insofar as that is the, is the spot of land that registers for all of the Americas what freedom really is, when you put them together and you locate them in a, in, a, in a performance expression that is processional, that understands the spirit of where these liberatory acts are in fact held, then that's where the, that's where the OBR really exists. Right? It is, under, it, is, it is in understanding the ethos of what works in performance and liberation, performance and resistance. It's Juve. Me, we, expressing whatever that sense of freedom is, and it's IT. Part of that tells us exactly what freedom is. <laughs> and masquerade being the lingua franca of all of us in the region. Masquerade as metaphor and as fact, right? Of, of all right, so of so our so resistance so acts in the region. That is, that is, so that is what it is. No, that, that, that is not to say, for example, like somebody might challenge it and say, well, boy, Jose is not mass, or Ramila is not mass, but that's not the point. <laughs> The point is, that, that's, and, and I agree with that person, the point is that mass is an attempt to express or explain what it is to have the expression in the road, the, the procession performance in the road. And if mass is taken as metaphor, we will probably realize that almost all of these expressions that we're talking about that contain the liberatory energy actually happen in the road. They don't happen inside of a place called a theater. Um, before we before we move on, I know, I know I'm Brendan. Brendan had a, a, a previous yeah. engagement. Um, so I just don't want to let him leave on ritualistically. So um yeah, man. Anytime you're ready, anytime you're ready, Brendan. We could yeah, leave and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks yeah, a lot. Brendan. Yeah. Blessings, blessings. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Back to you, Victor. What are you saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I, um, you know, fully endorse what Marvin is saying. I mean, he, he, he's brilliant in the way he, he, he explains things and his knowledge. I mean, I remember telling his mother to take care of him, you know, when he graduated many, many years ago. I told his mother, Patrick, take care of this boy. This boy have very far to go. And I mean, Marvin just continues to excel and impress me. You know, as a young Caribbean man, you know, um, really spreading his wings and so on. I'm very, very um, impressed by it. The, the, the problem, however, is how do we? We we laughing at Marvin. You hear this already? I just think <laughs> the problem is how do we get the masses to understand what you're saying? You know, how do we get not only to understand, but to now begin to 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 make it a part, just as the theater will press, the press intention is to make the problem or to make the issue a part of the individual. How can we now, you know, play the mass but in free the powder? You know what I mean? How can we get people to invest in the self worth and the self belief that, um, it's not getting rid of the Monday mass. It's not getting rid of the juve and have all this pretty mass on a Monday now and have all this pretty mass on Tuesday and everybody trying to 
to outshine each other, but to get back to the basics of the things that you're talking about. So that when you see that when we talk about a dragon mask and already building the costume for himself to really transform himself into that character of the dragon, you know what I mean? And people becoming the character and understanding the importance and, and the depth to which you know our history and our ancestral memory could take us. How do we begin to through it now? And I, I clearly understand that a theater space as created by the aristocrats is to really create a kind of people. Um, it, it's a kind of subversive um, activity then to really get our minds to become theirs in a kind of way, right? So how do we? How do we begin the journey? And that was, you know, is where we left off the last time. How do we begin the journey to, to, to really get people to to, to, to to baptize themselves in the ideas of, you know, of, 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 of themselves? I want to throw that question to Simeon. I just want to talk from experience. Every school has Simeon touch. They fall in love with the jab. They fall in love with quick fighting. So Simeon does have a magical power. So how do you get your students who after one experience become obsessed with the cultural art form well um it's, it's, it's not no magic really you know um any sense that the, 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 the students who become yeah. interested uh, uh, the, the, the students who become interested interested and in, sorry interested uh students with with um with heritage any sense that when they go home and ask questions um, they realize our grandfather, our great grandfather, uh, used to play, or the the grandmother um, was the, the the village medicine woman, and there are things that that are innate in those cultures that kind of pull them towards the culture. Um, all I do is introduce it and it's connect, right? Um, I think all from my experience, all I've really done is do the work. And the trend does ask the questions. And it goes back to our old um, understanding that uh, I heard elder, that long time old people never used to tell you anything until they ask the question and they had to ask the correct question, right? So I think <laughs> what we have to do is facilitate a, a space uh, that children know that they could ask the questions. And I think that that is probably what I do differently from other teachers in that my classroom is not a I tell you and you do, right? My classroom is a facilitation of, of, of learning, a place where, where students get to contribute. There are times that I throw away my lesson plan and, and let the students guide what's going on. And, and like I had a, 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 a video I took of students doing some activities that they wanted to do, that they chose to do. And it's a class that teachers have um, a terrible time with. Right, um, they, they just beat death and and um and teachers walk uh, calling for dean and these kind of things, right? But uh, it just have a way that I probably learn uh, from DCFA uh, that you just take what they're doing and make it a learning um experience, right? And um, yeah, it's it's there's no magic really. You just do it where you need to do, and things go happen. <laughs> okay, Daniel Lewis has been put away all the time. I guess Daniel should have had a plan too. I've seen him just pump it to take away. Um, okay. <laughs> if I may add to what Simeon is saying, yeah, that, yeah, um, yeah. somebody we are crackling up. I don't know if it's me. Yeah, um, um, <laughs> yeah you, I you, absolutely you to come and the people interwebs and say it is true. Yeah, that's in plan. <laughs> so that it really have to happen sometimes, you know. Um, I, I could be, I could be well <laughs> you know, when it comes to working with children, I absolutely love children are my favorite mediums to work with. <laughs> um just like Simeon said, you know, they become interested, they are interested, you know, they have a lot of the children I have worked with had no idea of the history, had no idea of anything that is happening outside of whatever bubble they live in. You all hear me? Right? Yeah, yes. okay. 
Yeah, um, <laughs> carry on, mute. Carry on. So, every group of children I've worked with has been harder than the, the last one. So, I worked with a group in South Southeast, for us, we in the school. Um, it was a camp for NCC, and we were doing carnival. It was a carnival camp, and I was the camp something, the camp director, the camp something. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I mean, I had Granny was there as well, um, writing the stories and all of that, and I had to just take these children and start the process of it is what is so important. The process that you go through to create that production is where the learning takes place. These children, some of them, I was scared because they're from some scary places and I myself live in a bubble. <laughs> and one of the young men, um, he said, Miss, what is after with me? I hold gone already, you know, and his eyes just look so empty and far away. And that was a scary and hard, hard, hard time for me. But, you know, they were learning about stick fighting. He, I was like, okay, you have to do something important. And Granny really pushed that more so. And he got the role of Midnight Rubber. Because, you know, Midnight Rubber is the real bad man. And he only feel he is a bad man. So <laughs> giving him this, he get a semblance of himself. He get an idea of this is what. And all of them, the young girls who like to be bubblicious, they, you know, learn about this whole idea of Jamet culture and they learn about the street theater and the carnival and not just carnival, but the traditional carnival aspects, the barrackyards, baby doll, you know, all of them will have a friend that is essentially a baby doll. And just them learning about this, you know, they, they become quiet, they become, you know, those mediums, they just listen, they take it in, they, they love it, they learn it. You know, so a lot of teachers nowadays, I have plenty of problems. I've had problems with all my teachers and I always challenge them. Because what, how are you trying to engage these children? You can't, you have to find their way of speaking. Each generation different from the last. You have to find their language to speak and all, and everybody have, have a love for stories. Everybody love the arts, whichever medium you decide to use, you know? So it's how you channel that story, how you channel that energy and that history. They would accept it, they do accept it. You know, all my students have taught openly yeah. love it and accept it. So it's, it's you know, you, you're correct, eh? You're very, very correct, eh? Should I, eh? But I want to go back to Marvin. I, I, I want Marvin to, to come in and, and really um, address the question that I asked in terms of how, 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 how do we, you know. All the things that you were saying before, Marvin, you know, mm. how, how do we get people to engage in a serious manner in terms of bringing the kind of cultural understanding and respect for the ancestral yeah. memories and traditions um, and so on. How, how do we begin to engage that? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, is it clear? Am I clear? Yeah. 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 Business of how. Um, Shania, Shania started answering the how. One how is um, that, that, that anecdote about the fella and the midnight robber. You can look at it in different ways. And I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you some examples of what I mean by the how. Um, one is, if you're working in theater, the assumption is that if, if you have to take on a role, the assumption is that you cannot, you cannot really play the role unless or until, as actor, you have empathy for your character you're going to play. Right? Mm -hmm. that, that point where you find inside of yourself what it is about yourself that is linked to the character, hero or villain, is not only a point of empathy, but it's a point of a, a different kind of understanding, a whole different humanity, right? And it brings, and it leaves every single person who must take on the role change 
having gone through that experience. That's part one. If you don't talk theater, for example, we talk um, mass processes. Tony Hall had, and I have to invoke Tony Hall because this is his conversation too. Uh -huh. Tony Hall had Juve popular theater process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was lucky. I, I, I really consider myself lucky to meet some of the people I meet in my life, my little life so far. Right? And and to get and to get to work with them. So so Tony has in Juve Popular Theatre process, you trying to find your mask. But the journey towards your mask is not simply about how good you put on the costume and play it. That's not simply what finding your mask is about. Finding your mask has to do with an examination of your life, your personal, very personal life and what happens to you at the point of crisis and how you respond and how your response mirrors, echoes, or resembles um, the response of the masquerade at the point of its performance. It's kind of like what an actor might call empathy in the theater, right? But it's taken from the human perspective when mm -hmm. your performance in real life is like a mask. And that's how you know when you find your mask. So when you do when you do JPTP or Tony, you have to you have plenty peeling to do it to, to deal with right plenty peeling away of your own self to arrive at the at the at the, at the, at the masquerade at the mass that's the masquerade, mass right that's two and then thirdly the people who play mass very much like the people who perform in any of the traditional enactments also have to go through a process where they meet or identify the spirit of the thing that they're going to play. So in Ramlila, you don't just get up a morning and play Hanuman. Right. You cannot. Right. Yeah. In a Jose, you don't just get up and spin a moon. You cannot. Yeah. You do not. You have to find that point, and, and then and then there are religious rites, right? You have to fast and all yeah, the rest of it that yeah. you have to go before you do the thing. Ultimately, yeah. what I'm getting at, therefore, is that whether it is theatre, whether it is um, traditional performance, or the point in between, which is the distilling of traditional performance as process or method, there is a journey that the performer has to make towards the towards the enactment. That is that that is really where Victor is asking. That's what Victor is asking about. The answer really has to do in the journey the performer makes. It's not so much what the audience sees all the time. What the audience sees is a show. Yes. yes. What the audience sees is a show, and 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 we and, and we are never able to measure it unless we have ways. Of, meaning, not even the people who do a play, when the people don't clap and they walk out the theater, unless you interview them, people, you don't know what the real response is. You don't. And it's the same thing with mass, it's the same with Jose, and it's the same thing with any of the methods inside of it where we perform the thing and we, and we solicit responses from the audience. We will never know until or unless we measure, in fact, what those audience responses are. But what we are certain about is that everybody, because, because all of us who are involved in traditional work, or, or whether it's traditional performance or in theater, we all have testimonies of the person who is transformed because of the power of the engagement in the process of the thing. And that has to do with the fact that when, you're, when, you're, when your inner self locates or finds the performance that she or he might have to own, to perform, to empathize with, to find humanity with, to find connection with, or what Dorothy has what calls brotherhood, right? Because it's all the same thing to me in my mind. It's just different levels are the same thing. And I don't mean levels in terms of hierarchy. I mean levels on a continuum, right? It's levels on a continuum. That in theater, there are ways that process bring you towards an understanding. But in ritual, it's the same thing at work. And we can measure more accurately if we paid attention to what happens to the participant. When we're talking about levels now, in traditional performance, when a man goes into a manifestation, the fact of a man, to, the fact of a woman or a man manifesting a god is a whole different level of understanding. Right? So I'm saying that the transformation comes in participation because because ultimately that is what all our traditions are saying participate unlike theater here we are going huh? unlike theater which yeah. doesn't always have you participating theater can be a very passive act 
But our rituals say that you must participate. All right. Either as performer so, or audience who doesn't really end up being audience in the traditional sense. So transformation is there. For me, transformation is there. The thing is, we have to make time now to measure. The rest of it, I, I'm, I'm not saying either that what we're doing is some kind of panacea and we could cure everything by just doing it. That's not what I'm saying right. either. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm saying that on one hand, we have to acknowledge that in the process, there are testimonies that tell us that, it, that, that there's magic in there. Because what we're dealing with is the individual coming to terms with himself and with contact with the performance, with the thing mm -hmm. that you're involved in, with the thing you're engaged in. Every fact of art, every fact of ritual takes you exactly there. That's part one. And I'm saying that in part two, we have to measure audience response to see what is in fact working. And I'm saying that, this, and, and this is what I've not said yet, part three is we need patience. We need patience. In other words, Simeon has to continue throwing away the lesson plan. Wait, wait. And, I, and, 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 and I'm not saying that to, to encourage a kind of rebelliousness, although rebe rebellious might be good. I'm saying <laughs> that he has to throw away the oh, lesson man. plan. Right? Yeah, yeah, thanks, yeah, the that plan because in five sorry. years' time, the testimony he will give for the transformation he has brought into his classroom or outside of his classroom will be the real victory for all of us. The testimony Shania will bring in five years when she continues in the patience and the process of the Kambule and the workshop, the spin-off workshops that happen thereof, because Kambule is just the event on the Friday. But Kambule is also the work Shania and them. That's fire that is setting in all the schools. I think that's setting the schools are fire. Kambule is fire, you know. Right? <laughs> so it's process and it's, and it's patience. You have to take your time. Right? Yeah. But the, and that's and exactly my point. That's what we are doing. And right, I also have to say that there is something, there's another victory. And it's one, it's one example of a whole heap, right? That victory, that victory the Creative Arts Center. Because the Creative Arts Center, in my mind, became a, a yard for the meeting, um, as a, a yard that became a meeting place, not simply for people to come and make theater and make art, but a meeting place or a yard where people will come and encounter the people who are working in traditional performance. And in so doing, become nourished twice, thrice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You don't, you don't walk out of those spaces thinking, thinking of yourself only as artists. You think of yourself when you leave as part of a community. And that's what the, and that's what the Creative Arts Center is. That's what it is. And, and, and I just want to... And, 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 and it's a space, and it's a, sp it's a space that for me has repre that represents a particular kind of victory in this conversation about how, right? And the more and we interrogate those things and validate them is where is where I think we will we will find all we will find all of the trees. And community it's, not a it's just yeah. That that word community. Um, there was there's a there's a question up in the um, up in the comment section there, and I'm gonna I'll, I'll bring it in. It's quite long, but um, the, the, the teachers in our midst, mostly all of the panelists here and even some of our viewers would be privy to 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 our situation currently, um that is happening, you know, um, coming out of the pandemic and addressing things like um, like examinations and, and children transitioning out of school, um, more specifically CXC and key performing arts. Here we have uh, Mr. Taylor <laughs> contributing a question here. Drama encourages the student to stage a production, performing arts drama, that is, key performing arts drama encourages the student to stage a production whether devised or set play, that for all means and reasons speaks to the idea of community. Given the current stance by CXC that this exam still has to happen within the next three weeks, how do we propose or advise the current performing arts teachers treat with this? Do you think the nature of the work vested in community is practical? And while the panelists well, are well, as well, I really encourage the audience to probably give their suggestions as well. And the audience could give their suggestions via voice note. You could comment here, or you can even send voice note to that number on the screen right now. New studio, new technology. One. One. <laughs> McKillian is a graduate of the Creative Arts Center, and like Simeon, he throws away his lesson plan. Because that is a rebellious question. <laughs> <laughs> That's part yes. one. 
Ez a Prince of Stand token. Nem fel az, hogy beljesztesz. Meg kell ilyen Adam. Last part for me. Last part for me. But no, but, but to answer the question, to answer the question, um, the, 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 the um, community, community, um, community, community for me is not simply geographic. It's not simply geographic. Um, and I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. And we have, we have to be a little more, right? When you sit down on Facebook and you're having a conversation and somebody from Sweden jumping on board, eh -huh, even though they wouldn't literally say eh -huh, right? <laughs> um, you, um, that person is either becoming a part of your community or you are becoming a part of theirs, right? I don't know, or, or probably both at the same time because there is something that you are finding common ground on, right? That's part one. So community is not simply geographic. Community has to be understood as the point at which um, there, are, there, are, there are a set of likes or understandings that are mutual, and, right? And, and that people vibrate on a particular level or, and so on. I could find a better way to describe it, but catchy drift, right? Um, second is, um, I, I, I think I'm aware of what, of what the, of what the comment says with the CXC exam. I think I, I think I have a little bit of the backstory there. Um, but, but, the, but, but these are, but these are the options, um, in my mind. One, and, and, I'm, and I'm only giving two, but they're probably two million. <laughs> One is the CXC teachers who think that there's an issue have to form a community. And when that community is formed, when that community is formed, they have to they have to say what it is they have challenges with, and then they have to say what it is they would like to see. That's the only way you that's the only way you can move the discussion forward. You have to say what you have a problem with and what you'd like to see. Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter will go the next step. And it's in fact it's already moving its next step because it's not simply saying anymore what it didn't want, it's saying what it wants. Yeah. So transformation only really will come when you start saying what you want. You have to put what you want in the universe. So the community has to be formed among the people who call themselves CXC teachers, CSEC teachers, CAP teachers, or whatever what it is. And then say, well, this is a problem and this is what I want. That's one way. The other way is that um, one of the things we've been finding, and we don't have the answer, but we've been finding since this COVID business is, um, okay, COVID says stay inside isolation, whatever this thing is called now, um, which, is, which, which, is, which, is, which is opposed to the idea of what theater is. Social distancing is opposed to the idea of physical interaction. Theater is about interacting. Social distancing is about a part, right? <laughs> um, and and what, what we've been trying to do, all of us all over the world involved in theater teaching and so on, like theater making, is trying to use existing technology to fill a gap that we know how that we know has to be filled. All of us have been trying to do it. So perhaps point number two is what is available to us in existing technology that carries the principle that, that allows for us to execute the principle of interaction or engagement that can allow us to fulfill what it is we think we have to do. And even with them two uh, two options, there are two million more possibilities. But we have we have to know where we stand in the in the in the conversation, right? We have to know where we stand, right? And that's that what it will take. But I want to throw a question to you in, in as it relates to the whole Cape performing arts situation, right? What do you think is or should be the role of the Secondary School Drama Association? as well as the Caribbean Secondary School Drama Association in addressing the challenges being faced by the students as well as the teachers in this regard? Lobby? They should both be lobbyists. I mean, well, I, I listen, I, I, I don't, you see, you're encouraging me to include myself. <laughs> I am no longer at Secondary School Drama. No, at Caribbean. At Caribbean. Um, but, but I think that... Um, uh, people need to lobby the, uh, exactly what Marvin says. You just can't identify the problem. You also have to say what you want. 
my my take on the thing is that um that that cxc itself says in the syllabus a minimum of six weeks that is what cxc expects in terms of preparation and if cxc is saying something different to what they have said before what is the rationale for doing so what is it what, what is the minister of education saying what is the curriculum division of the ministry of education saying well, well i understand I, I i've seen what the teachers are saying but um are the teachers just saying things on paper or are they getting up and lobbying the mps are they lobbying whoever lobbying is not just on facebook you know lobbying is really getting bodies out there as well and and getting your voice out there how many of you have spoken to the new how many of you brave enough to go on tv go on the new you talk to the newspapers to say exactly what it is marvin has articulated and you all have simeon and mckillian and they have articulated it well but in a very nice and i think a very um you, you understand that kind of way that doesn't show what real resistance is so if you don't show resistance people are going to feel that you're oppressed it's as simple as that and you have to get up there let your voices be heard let your ideas for this for solving the problems be heard and then people will begin to take you on that is why they put us in that theater and let us be spectators because they want us to be passive and the whole thing about oppression and so we're talking about it is to make everybody an activist i mean out of the million and a quarter people that have in trinidad a million and three quarter the half half a million don't like me because i just get up and talk and i just say what i have to say when i have to say and who don't like it you know, you know what i mean they, they could do what they want but i i, I, I say what i have to say very, very, very Last week, one of the panelists said to be an artist is to be an activist. I think it was a Bill Jackson, and that is true. That is gospel. Continue. Almost, almost synonymous. Yeah. Yes. The Sydney thing about resistance, <laughs> resistance, is, it brings risk. You can't want to resist and not include risk factor. You go to protest, you go to riot. You have how to prepare to, to die. Up, how much time do you have? Yes. They lock up because they have if to take there's a, a love way that says, if your care breaks, don't play right. in stick yes. fight. Yes. Because, I mean, you have to know, Marvin, I think you're muted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Marvin. <laughs> Um, you have to be ready to receive something, something going and happen if you're ready to resist. You have to be ready for that resistance process. And the thing is, CXC is a system where you don't really care about students, they don't really care about the teachers, they don't care about nothing, right? They try this whole education process system is just creating functional adults for this functional society whatever they call functional so being a part of the cxc system already takes away from what theater speaks to what art speaks to what history i remember doing cxc csec history and their from my SBA to the exam was a mess because I did what I wanted and I did what I learned as historical facts. Do what you want. Exactly. <laughs> and I had to write a note to CXC in my multiple choice exam because I was like, what kind of madness is this you asking this question? First of all, it's null and void because it makes no sense. And I refuse to answer it. I will put, luckily, I still pass the people subject. <laughs> But, it, I think so. <laughs> but so we said you have to know there are many options to solving this problem in a polite way. But that's what we really want, and that's what we want to teach the students. At the end of the day, the students are who you know they're coming up and they have to form a mindset of 
who they are. <laughs> yes, Daniel Lewis, I throw him a whole syllabus a long time. <laughs> you know, so I, I cannot function in this system. I don't know how to feel for the teachers that have to go through it, that are going through this right now. But I, you have to be ready and you have to be prepared and you have to be prepared to fight for your students because it's them on the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you take yeah. a risk. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be disrespectful. You stand up for what you believe in. You understand? And, and I tell you all, my ringtone on my phone is Bob Marley's Get Up, Stand Up. It reminds me every day when my phone rings that I have to get up and stand up for the things that I believe in. And if you really believe that we, we, we can't do the exam the way CXE wants it, then we have to stand up and we have to petition, we have to lobby. I mean, we, Trinidad and Tobago, we are the biggest contributors to, 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 to CXE and, and their livelihood and so on. And if we say, uh, we should have a say in terms of how that exam examination is run, uh, you know, because we are, you know, one of the, <laughs> one of the biggest contributors to, to, to the existence. Yes, I mean, I want to put a question to you. What is your view on what is happening and what should happen as a response? Well, um, what I know is happening on the teacher's end is that um, tutor has been contacted, um, letters to the curriculum officer has been um, sent. Um, I believe that we are working on a petition on this. I'm not a CAPE teacher right now, but uh, I'm in a, a theater teacher group and I'm seeing things that are happening. Um, so they're not just voicing it on Facebook, there are things that, that are happening. I don't know the extent to which everything is happening. I know there was talk about doing petitions and these kind of things. So um, I think what they are, what CXC is asking right now is, is very difficult. And um, I think as I saw McKellians uh, spoke about it at some point in time, that especially those who come out of DCFA, which is the majority of teachers, we have a habit of um, turning nothing into to plenty in our way. And we give, yeah, and we give those in charge a kind of license to say, well, they don't really need anything. They could, they, they could work with a, with a breakdown building, you know, <laughs> that end paint in 50 years, you know, that, that is fine. They're making it happen. We don't need to change anything. But um, I think um, what uh, uh, both uh, Marvin and Victor said is that things need to happen as a community. We need to work together and be in, uh, on the same page, right? Um, right now, um, I'm studying Boa under Boa Academy, and um, one of uh, my teachers, um, Rondell Benjamin, uh, always emphasizes this idea of not only um, organizing, not only a creating a movement, but organizing and buying into the vision. If you don't buy into the same understanding, then nothing going on happen, right? Um, and I'll point back to some of the action we were making um, when we were protesting uh, for better conditions at DCFA. And we had sometimes situations where different people in, this, in DCFA wanted different things. Different parts of the department wanted different things. So uh, we didn't always have the same vision at the same time, right? And that kind of uh, uh, chuck we will plenty, right? Um, so I think uh, it, it is as what is being said, which is you have to lobby, you have, but that, that, that idea of community of working together and buying into the same vision, everybody needs to be on the same page. All right, before we move on, I just wanna announce that we have a voice note Remember new studio, new technology. And for those watching and those listening, remember you can always send your voice notes and questions to 868 319 8100. Do the voice note. How far back does one have to go? How deep does one have to go to really understand the revolutionary aspect and the ritual aspect of theater, specifically the ritual aspect of theater that created this thing, this thing called theater. How far back does one have to go? Do you think is 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 even as further as the as the man-made religions and stuff like that? Is do we have to go further back than that? 
Say yes. <laughs> oh, Marvin, say yes. That ritual is yet, huh? Don't stop. Don't play the voice when I get it. Yeah, I'm just doing my business. It's, um... The, 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 the whole far back... The whole far back is, um, as you know, when we when we talk about it, when we teach it in school, um, we we talk about it as starting with the Greeks, right? Because we because we usually because because our institutions have been taught to talk about theatre as um, as Western, um, so beginning with the Greeks. Yeah. But know. um, but if the if if Ramlila is a theatre that belongs to a community that another community that calls something theater elsewhere doesn't understand is also a theater we'll probably realize one that there are communities and cultures that have been performing their theater as ritual or resistance perhaps even before the greeks um bearing in mind for example that greek Greek civilization, and I didn't say so, not Marvin George. <laughs> Greek civilization um, organized its gods, say that. right? From Egypt. I never said that. Herodotus said so. And Herodotus is who the West acknowledges as the father of history, right? He said so. So the god, the deity that was responsible for theater, which is Dionysus, which, which, incident, which incidentally is the deity that the Romans end up calling Bacchus, from which we get Bacchus. Mm -hmm. Stop right there. It's a deity of wine and revelry and procession and magic and illusion. It's the deity that Trinidad knows. That is the deity that was honored for the Greeks to arrive at theater. But that deity is older than Greece. That deity, according to Herodotus, was borrowed from the Egyptians, and the Egyptians called him Osiris. Right? To whom there is a festival, that a performance that was processional, that recognized also the story of the life of Osiris as a as a god as as God human or however these things are organized. I'm saying that to say really that um how far back is as far back as they want to go. That's right. The how far back is as far back as you want to go. And and that has to do with the fact that existence w w w in, insofar as to be human is also about trying to one express to contact to interact to make sense of your environment and so on, that is, those activities are essentially the business of theater. So like a play with words. It's about making, it's not like a? So like a play we do. It's not like a what? <laughs> yes, it's not like a play we do. For <laughs> the <laughs> best village. Right? It's, but, but, but that's what it is. So that you could, you could choose. You could choose to read the full history and deal with civilization as a whole and see that, well, you know, there are performances from the very earliest of civilization that will take you before the Greeks. You could choose to start with the Greeks and realize, well, boy, the Greeks <laughs> began their civilization in the same way. Or you could choose to accept that, well, me and nothing about none of them, I know about Trinidad. Right? And Trinidad have a thing named Carnaval, but incidentally, the Carnaval is also linked to the same name Dionysus, linked to the same name of Cyprus. I could give you the give you the theater in the same way. Your, it's your call. It's your call. Just choose. You choose. Uh, Marvin, we have you take it. Right here. We take someone? Princess Tong. Hey, Princess <laughs> Tong. <laughs> oh, um, wow! Hey, listen, we ended up we ended up like last week. We ended yeah, up we like last week. All kind of thing, all kind of thing, and we go. But I tell you, well, as Tristan uh, mentioned earlier, 
new studio, new things, new technology, we get on real bad. You know, the viewers who, who have been faithful so far would, would know so TV have a thing we call the question of the day. And it's usually presented to the panel. But with this moving on up, like the Jeffersons and we'll them. We'll be moving on up, moving <laughs> on up. We have a question of the day for the audience. And not just a, a question that they will just ask. Be the first to answer something. We have a prize. Hey, a prize! <laughs> I find this unfair. <laughs> I want to be part of your heels for a prize. Yeah? So, so the, the, jump the, in, you have a prize, and the prize is not for the panel? I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. like that. <laughs> I don't know. Like they want a rebellion here. They want resistance. <laughs> All right. So this this question of the day for the audience is sponsored by the Blue Edition. Sponsored by the Blue Edition. Fifty two Saint Vincent Street, Tuna Puna. All right. And the question of the day. Now these are race because. Plenty of in, in, in the viewing audience, they know the answer to this, right? So it's a race. So get all your fingers ready, whether it's, it's, it's thumbs or it's, or it's on a laptop, right? I've given some hint before we get in there, right? The answer is a year, a particular year, and it's thumb, something we talk about, right? Yeah? In what year did Kambule occur? Go ahead. Right, so we are waiting on the answer. We will continue with discussion and I'll go back in the I win the prize. <laughs> I win the prize. Give me the prize, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations. She knows sex, boy. How can you use Google? With Google? <laughs> Congratulations to Ms. Daniel Lewis, 1881. I have a little query for that Listen question. Listen to me. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Yeah, did you mean when did the Kambule riot? Did you ever call up somebody judges cheat or something? That's why I'm saying. Because that is totally wrong question. Because it has something I had to try again. There's something I had to try again. Because um, recently I learned that there was a Kambule done on a bonfire in Point Fortin. Where people used to dance a uh, bambula and, and, and calendar and all kind of thing, right? So it had a kambule happening in point four ten. So when they ask when kambule occur, you kinda need to clarify that now, boy. Come on, have answer. Yeah, take it. In. You have to send that query to Barbados. Yeah, she curry. Barbados, fifty pages, fifty pages. That's what I for, right? Um, but yeah. Yeah, I wanna I wanna resist you and your, your resistance right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not with already, but I'll take the, I'll take I'll take it and be more specific in um in future questions of the days, right? Um I want to direct the, the, the conversation to um something that kind of emerged out of last discussion. Um we talk about it not at length, but it wasn't even Moldova. It was talked about in, in, in some in some meat, in some um some volume, but want to hear the contributions of the panelists here tonight is about um our best village our best village as um as resistance a reflection of, of oppression and what oppression um anything anything you want to throw into that idea into that idea even if it ties into something we talked to already which which it should um how we could jump in in that dance No, 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 hold on, hold on. The, the thing is, the best village itself is rebellion and resistance. Because when Eric Williams came in, um, there was the there was the 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 art 
the art art festival that was uh, existing at that time and they really i mean the research shows that the funds from the arts festival was redirected into the best village and um eric williams really wanted the the local culture the culture of the villages in all of its aspects to be promoted so that when you know they were doing all these foreign things and having plays and and, and poems and so on and so on in the arts festival we, 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 which was quite a a, a, a very um, well-known festival well attended well um, organized and so on um that 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 um, the, the the focus changed with the coming into power of dr eric williams who who wanted to to to, to, to promote as it were um what what existed in in the villages and when you hear the story of um uh, far off places that had to block off the road and and build tents over the road with flambos and so on to put on the place you know the dead was traveling down to guaya guaya all hours in night after you don't you don't you don't you don't judge one group and you have to head down to guaya guaya to talk in the night to see them perform and so on i mean that in itself you know that a group that that, that a community will come out will, will sacrifice of its own time and so on and energies um to really to really uh perform what the the, the meaning of the community um uh, was you know for instance you know um down in Mayaro and so on they have a particular kind of belly that they do there that Jean Coggins and they were researching you know before she died and so on so they did the point I'm making is that the best village, the, the implementation, the coming of the best village itself was an act of resistance against the, 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 the colonial norms. So that we, um, Eric Williams, felt it necessary for, to, 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 for an emergence of the people themselves and, and, and the things that the, the, you know, the people, um, the, the 80% that, um, that Professor Errol Hill spoke about, you know, in his um, in, 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 in his article that he wrote about the emergence of the West Indian people and so on in the theatre and so on. So to me, in itself, it's an act of resistance, you know. People could talk about their own um, involvement in this village, you know, and I know I, I, I know that Marvin had a marvellous uh, a marvelous entry into the best village, you know, and did some wonderful, wonderful work with, with, with what was the name of the place again by the uh, West Indian Tobacco Place? What they call Mondo. Did some wonderful work with the Mondo. I remember judging that year and was really blown by the, the quality of work. Not that, not that it's the first piece of work of that quality, but to take a, a, a Greek work and bring it into the best village and to make sense of it to me was really really outstanding so maybe marvin and simian and, and uh, they could talk a little more about you know their acts of resistance uh, through the best village and so on for me it was like an outsider looking in from the point of view of a judge from the point of view of uh somebody who did some research into the the, the, the best village and you know people like uh lovely how oh he revolutionized it together with the Fibo and with um what was his name again griffith the griffith guy um you know hoping to bring it along you know but people would have different memories of course i again old and you know <laughs> things are so clear anymore i want to pass the question over to shania what are your thoughts on this political act of resistance right right <laughs> Um, I feel more so the work or the works that are done within Best Village could be considered the act of um, resistance or the, the participation of the groups, the communities themselves. I mean, each community has its own struggle, its own problems to face, like you know, like McKellian, like Simeon said, McKellian mentioned about the DCFA students who always doing plenty with a little bit. That's the kind of work that is usually produced in Best Village. You know, they get very, very little resources 
and produce so much. Um, the theatrical work, the choirs, you know, you will find one person in one village or community doing all the choreography and the sewing and the standards. And so all of that in itself is just showing that these people could become something and these people are something a lot more than, you know, just happy prancers, you know, that people would just think best villages, people watch best village and say, they're not something important or whatever. And the fact that these villages and these communities, not only do they participate and they compete, but they carry the tradition, the folk tradition, onto younger generations. And I think that in itself, the holding on to traditions and the carrying it on by generation to generation is in itself an act of resistance against colonial power. So it could go two sides, really. Yeah? Um, if you think back to what um, Dr. Wilkinson and Loveless and them did back in the day in relation to Best Village Theatre, when it used to be a concert and they created a play and they practically pushed the agenda of Best Village actually having a Best Village Theatre. I think um, talking to Dr. Wilkinson uh, to flesh that out more would be of some benefit to answer this question, right? But there, mm -hmm. there was a time that the people participating in Best Village shaped Best Village and what, people, what the judges should look for and these kind of things, right? Um, but it have a way that institutions or uh, those in power have uh, that they come in take over thing and then make here abide by it. So then you have this thing called rules and things you have to perform for. And you have more and more people well, in more contemporary times arguing you down to the rules and not really worrying too much about making the work, right? Yeah. Um, I think yeah. there was a time, yeah, there was a, a, a time when Best Village was doing the work, right? Um, if the, is that still the case? I don't know. Um, I think Marvin could probably um, expand more uh, in relation because he has been there in different forms from a child um, to a director uh, to running a commu community group and these kind of things, right? And I think that there, there's this line that we always tread in whether we, Best Village, could be a resistance. Is it still resistance? Or is it conforming now to what is um, being uh, uh, put forward? As these are the rules. This is what you do. Show where the rules. I can show where the syllabus. <laughs> hey, I'm not showing you the syllabus. I'm showing you the plan. Show where the syllabus. Yeah. Um much of much of what much of what everybody has said. Um that on the one hand, the fact of these communities performing what they know as you know, offering what they know as performance or as art is an act of resistance. Um that historically the people who innovated in the in, in the festival who who you know who, who saw themselves as kind of radical and chose to to do something else with the art, which is Ifibo and their, that, that whole Ifibo and um, Reggie and them, I think, right? That whole section in the middle days, in the 80s, moving the, moving, Loveless too, moving the festival um, um, from the concert shape to the, to the, to the theater production, um, into, well, into what it might be uh, today. And, and to what Simeon is talking about, where that after, after some time, when we when we build something, we start we start saying rules and this is how the thing should be done and so on. Okay, fine. Um, it, it's um, all of the, all of those are the are the, are the, are the moments of resistance. The rule is not a moment of resistance, huh? and so that's why the, the, the note the, the note is such a really rule book. Okay, the 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 act the act of resist the next act of resistance for me in this village 
is for the is, is, is for the participants in this village. Perhaps to ask that it, that, that it stop being a competition. That's the next act of resistance. And the Perfect. end of the competition. And and this this is the reason this is the reason why I'm offering that proposal. No, no, I, I, I come through the competition. Um uh, I mean it, it, I, I I know for example that one or two men in this village, some of the roller fellas, who just talk about me as the as, as a UE fella, right? But um <laughs> but 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 in reality, um my my, my work in Mongdo is older than when I read read on the bands at UE. Um, I, I was I was there in the in the um, late eighties, early nineties, doing thing and losing. I I know it is to come last, you know. I know it is to come last, um, you know. And 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 that and that helps. And a, a, a lot of people don't understand what 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 coming last, why coming last is so important. Everybody thinks they must win, but nobody understands the importance of failure. You have to fail. And and I I, I don't think enough of us are being allowed to fail. Right, uh, so we could do the next thing. But but the reason I'm saying do away with competition now is this: that that for best village to move um, where it ought to be, which is beyond a community festival that somebody does do because they think is some kind of amateur act that people in our community does do, is we have to insist on what it has come to know. Meaning, if best village knows that there is a theater. That has emerged as a result of its years of practice and process, then we should be doing research into that. Right? And not so much insisting on rules, but 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 laying down, for example, um, a space that says, well, this is you know, this is what some people have done. Would you like to try so and so and so? Right? In, in other words, introduce people into process as, as opposed to introduce people into competition. Right, a way of working. What is the knowledge that comes out of best village, as opposed to how to win the first prize or how to what you try to win the best ballet and you know and then can the formula that was the formula, which is less, which is less about creativity and innovation and more and some and sometimes not all the time because according to same Dr. Wilkinson, best village in, in very many ways captures much of what is good about our work in festival arts and also much of what is bad about our work in festival arts. But if, for example, it's less about the formula and less about copying and more about innovation, and I'm not saying that there is, that there is no innovation. I'm saying if it, if it is given a chance sometime to examine what it can do on the side of innovation, we might move on to the next thing. But to innovate, you have to begin not by assuming that you want to win a competition, but by assuming that there are ways of working. If you know what the ways of working are, you could challenge them. But not everybody who comes into Best Village wants to come in to do that. Sometimes people come into Best Village wanting to win. I, I want to beat so and so. I will beat so and so this year, right? And call names. Call you names. Know, that, 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 no, no, no. It's about, it's about calling names. Competition. Is that about names? Competition encourages that in everybody. It's yeah. not about who. It's about who say it. Everybody will say it at some point because it's a competition. You had to beat somebody. And competition is also part of the ethos of our culture. It's, it's, it's stick fighting, it's all kind of thing. But I'm saying, even the people in stick fighting have to go through a right before they enter the ring. Mm -hmm. What is the right of Best Village? R I T E, not R I G H T. It's not everybody it's right. Well on, it's well what is the R I T E of Best Village? What is the right? Right? So I'm saying that maybe the next act of resistance is for all the directors, all the choreographers, all the music teachers, everybody just wake up one morning and say, bye, fire burn competition. Right? Show the competition. What we want is a festival that allows us to appreciate what is the more what are the modes of performance that this history of this festival has created for us. And if we could immerse ourselves in a learning about what that immersion in that history might be. And what are the styles emerging? What are the processes emerging? And so on. We could probably innovate and make the next thing. But everybody wants to beat somebody. <laughs> it's not like it's, it's gonna make it's not fine tuning the thing because winning winning is simply the measure of who you're better than the year. It's not it's not a measure of how of how nuanced or mature the art is. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. A year when the festival yeah, is really yeah. bad, you could be mediocre. You go win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, the, it is not, so, so 
Uh, yeah, anybody, yeah. anybody who yeah. worked with Mongo, as Mongo used to say, we never tell, we never had conversations on winning. Lalon, we never talk about winning. We don't talk about winning. And don't quarrel. Right? That's I know you always get my don't quarrel. We don't want to win. In. Who wants to win out of the business? Go and join our next few person. Don't win. Let me let me work. Let me work hard at fine tuning the art that we make him. Forget win. Forget yeah, but, win. Yeah, right. The thing is one that competition and innovation don't go hand in hand at all. Huh. Right? What they say they want to have a competition, they're going to have established rules, and they will tell you that a PK have so many steps, and a belly you have to hold up your skate that they are, and if you don't do it like that, the judge is going to mark you down. I only judge in panel because I know the two officers that be going on around there. So that that is a competition aspect of it. I I totally agree with you that we cannot be stuck in the comp competitive aspect that as as creative people involved in in a performative art we have to be creative yes and we have to be innovative the other thing is i have been saying for a very very long time now you know and i've had written in, in different places in different things and i've said it in in, in different forums so on that we need to start seeing best village as our national theater if we do not see and the things that you're talking about marvin can only begin to happen when we bring the best village up to the stature of national theater and we begin to perceive ourselves as this is something that belongs to us as i mentioned the last time last week that the National Drama Association in 1980 took a decision that this village was not theater, you know. And I told them that I had it in, yeah, I had it in black and white, written in Grace Mirages, and writing that the decision was taken by the committee that best village was not theater. And that's why last week we talk, I talked about the, the, the role that Loveless played and the role that Ifibo with Dita Kassava mean it, it remained fresh in my mind from 1984. You understand how, how impactful that was. And the word of Reginald Gupton so on day that we were mentioned last, last, last week as well. Right? If we cannot promote ourselves to nationalism in terms of how we be considered our theatre that Eric Williams was striving for from 1963. This is 2020. This is 2020. So many years ago. You understand? And we can't move the, the, the whole idea of the thing up to, to that national status and begin to treat it like that way. Instead of having the Ministry of Culture running a best village and then running an intact. What does the ministry itself say that the national theater arts people that they do theater with and the best village thing is two different things altogether? You know what I mean? So we, we you know, we're cutting ourselves in half there as well. I feel that yes, innovation is very important. And I saw the work that you did, and I know that there was a lot of inventive things in that. And I appreciate the work a whole as a matter of fact, I nearly lost my judge work because of you. Because after the player come down on stage to talk to you, and one of the judges, one of the other judges saying how I go in and talking to people, you understand, involved in the competition and blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? So the innovation thing has to be. Uh, we have to. We, we have to begin to find the room inside there for the innovation. And don't say well the PK and the belly and the this must have these steps and these colors and things and the, the costumes must be like this. And if they don't match up like that, then you're going to lose points for this and that and the other and so on. And then of course, you need to lift the thing up to the standard so that when people come in the tourist boat and thing after the COVID and so on. We must have a performance in Nap in, 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 in Napa as part of the they come into Trinidad on the ticket because of the ticket must include a show of what Trinidad has to offer. The two by four thing we just do down on the docks when they come with two wine, a girl in a costume and so on and so on. You, you know, but to show them something that, that, that is meaningful, you know. Ladies and, you and know, gentlemen, you know, the store play. we are reaching our curtain call hour. So, but I just have one more question to ask. We started the conversation 
talking about the sort of artistic expressions or cultural expressions that came out of systems of oppression. Then we went into how they were, I guess, demonstrated or enacted or mm -hmm. as an act of resistance. And now I'm gonna lead it towards resolution. So I have to resist the resolution that we're looking for, right? Do you think, or rather, what do you think is the role of the arts and theater in social reform? Reform, that's what we're looking for. Social reform. Like how, how can our craft inform where we want to be as a society? Oh, sorry, end question. Um, anybody jump in? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Can I start with you, Marvin? Oh, shots with Marvin, you No problem. Yeah. Yeah, man. No problem. No problem. Um, um, I think I think given where where we started, or at least where I came into the in the in the conversation, that if art if art in the region for us has been at the center of acts of resistance and our own transformation, our own self defining, then we then let, let, Let's begin by accepting that we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice, but reformation, whatever that is, right? Has to be. That's one. Two is that we already know that one of the ways we've been trying to do that is to link, is to link art to education, um, and that has to do with one teaching of art, but also the use of, but the use of art or the arts in bringing about um, in, in, in bringing about different kinds of understandings among communities. So Brendan, when you're here talking about arts in action and so on, it's, it's that kind of work. Secondary schools drama is also that kind of work where you're learning about the art. Arts in action is learning through the art, right? So let, let's say that, that's, that's another one. Um, three is that we have to accept that in our, in our work in art in communities, in non-formal settings, and, and I'm saying non-formal as opposed to formal now, in non-formal settings, we have to accept what is valuable and educational there. In other words, um, how, um, where are we understanding that in Boa Academy, we are not only teaching stick fighting, right? Stick fighting is the skill that is being taught, right? But there is something else being learned. Who is, who is asking that question, right? Or adversely, who is advocating that there is something at work there. Similarly with the work of GVIT, which is why when I talked earlier, I talked about forget the theater of it. What is the drama of it? And by the drama, I mean what the process. What do people experience when they go into it, right? So it's about acknowledging in, in that in non-formal setting, in, in non-formal education, um, there, is, um, there is work that has been done that ought to be acknowledged as learning spaces, learning centers, and so on, right? Where are the policymakers and that, and how do we get policymakers to come in and to, and to join that conversation? And and then and then and then I think um, finally is is that um, is that the the the, the artist community in general, um, we also have a journey to make, and that journey is that journey involves um, involves um, going beyond our silos, right? Um, sometimes we sometimes we operate in very compartmentalized ways. Trinidad is a place like that. I mean, all over the world, but Trinidad is a particular place like that, in the sense that, but Trinidad is magical in that, in the sense that we could at one be operating in silos and at the same time be overlapping, right? So men is only tell you what the silo is when it's time and stop and then come back and you know Trinidad is really like that and and just know how to mingle thereafter. But but when I'm talking about operating in the silos and breaking that, I'm talking about. What is the what is the or organizing principle or so that a community of artists and culture workers can begin to start making pronouncements on what we might do next that is transformative beyond competition, beyond this is my group, that is your group, and so on. Or, and also beyond government telling us what to do because government says that you must um, do the um, you must do the I don't, I don't want to say like government telling us but catch it you must be in the artist registry for example that's one thing right the artist registry is the is the thing is the instrument that allows us to participate in something that could be recognized by 
the state and so on and so on and access funding, etc. But that's government from this working like this, almost, right? Whatever thing, whatever is feeling it, it's government working so. I'm talking now about government working so, where the community of artists and culture workers do so and then say, well, this, these are the kinds of things we need next and so on. And Trinidad has room for that. We write for that, right? Like write now today, right? That's the, that's, that's, that's the next thing for the social reform, where we decide that art is part and parcel of that, and we advocate for it because we work in so and so. Yeah. And what's your response? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> the, question. <laughs> the question is, what do you think is, or what is the role of the arts and theater in social reform? What do you think? Or what, do you, what do you think that is, or what, what it might be? Could be, yeah. What are the possibilities that exist in that? That is a difficult question for me to answer. Um, I think it kind of goes back to um, the idea of who do we think each other are, right? Um, there, there's a way in Trinidad where we say that all are we is one, but not really, right? And I think there, there's a way that the, the artist could... Um, I'll go back to Agosto Boal. In, in, in the beginning of his book on um, Theater of the Oppressed, he goes through this whole idea of what it means to, um, to create art, right? And uh, it, the, when he was talking about imitating uh, art as imitation, he was not talking about art as just imitating what is out there, but he was talking about the, the creator principle of, um, of creating, that, that principle of creating what should be rather than what is, right? So I think the artist first must have an idea of what should be, right? Uh, what, what are the ideas of our society? What are the ideas of our community? And how could we make it better? And there's no way you could guide, and the artist has always been that voice of the people, right? But there's, there's no way that you could guide without understanding your society, right? The fact that uh, Trinidad and Tobago have two different histories is important, right? The fact that we were a, an Amerindian state then controlled by the Spanish, which then had a, a planter class that was French, right? Which later, uh, a, a colony, Trinidad itself, uh, was controlled by the British, which brought in a, a, a Bayesian police force to teach us how to uh, speak English, right? That, that complexity on its own is something that our artists need to understand before we even begin any journey towards guiding the way forward. Uh, so that's my contribution. That, that, that kind of brings back a point from last week uh, before the other panel, let's contribute, that um, you had a new, you, you, we, we kind of unsure of our history and, and that, that kind of, um, I believe was Mud that said, Mohammed, that said that that ignorance of history and then the rest of the panel agree, that ignorance of history is what um, is like a, a block in our ability to dream. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and that's what we're talking about, that, that resolution, that what comes after resistance is that dream. And, and collectively, not really um, seeing it, I believe. So, carry on. Do you have any contributions? Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> so, the question is about social reform and the way forward, essentially. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. How yeah. do fit in that? Right, right, right. Of course. <laughs> That's my life. <laughs> um, so, I was involved, I am involved in this Future Leaders program that Marvin knows about um, with Global Grooves Manchester. And last year we had a workshop and we were discussing the same sorts of things as young future leaders, where do we see the arts 
Oh, uh, you know, what we want, what placement would the art would have or whatever, whatever in society. And uh, a lot of the other young musicians and visual artists, you know, they had a lot of pretty things to say, like we oh, peace and vegan <laughs> and vegetarianism and da 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 da, da. And the, the majority of them, well, I mean, Global Views itself does, is interested in carnival arts. They do Brazilian, Ijesha, which is their form of Orisha practice. And, you know, they love that kind of thing. That's what they practice. And what I realized in that moment was that we as not white people always have to fight for our own space. You know, the whole thing of drumming, whichever culture, whichever indigenous culture, this, we were punished, we were oppressed for drumming our own art. You know, so everything that we do, we sing, we speak patwa today, we drum, we dance, anything we do is, you know, seen as a problem. So we always have to fight. There is never an end of the, the final end. The way forward is, of course, being rooted in the history. The, the whole idea of the Sankofa bird. The Sankofa bird, you know, as you look back, you go forward. You cannot move forward if you refuse to acknowledge your history. And we as a people, we as a community in, in the Caribbean, in Trinidad and Tobago, have history and have ancestry that dates way before indentureship and enslavement. And all of those things are important for us to know how to go forward. How did our own people live and survive and build their own empires and economies? Because we're trying to exist in a space that's not made for us. We're trying to exist in a colonial system that is not for us, from the education system to the workforce, to all of that that we depend on so heavily is not for us, especially as artists, theatre practitioners. It's not, it's not made for us to really benefit anything. It's made for us to entertain them when they choose. You know, so we always have to base my grandmother is a storyteller. So that's how the first time when I started teaching English, the first thing I did with my class was tell them a story. And the first assignment I gave to them was to write a story. So, you know, that kind of way, that is our traditional art, storytelling. In all cultures, you find forms of storytelling. That is an important way forward. And I think that is one of the forms that is in Best Village as well, storytelling. And that's something that you don't even hear about that much, storytelling within the Best Village. Um, I think that's a very important way forward, you know, learning and being rooted in our history. That not even just sitting down and reading books, but knowing about your own type, your own ancestry, I think new parents, new teachers, people, these people need to know who they are and what they're teaching their children and the importance of all our art. I study theater and I live and breathe theater because I see theater as the mother of all the arts because I do everything, you know? I'm not just a theater practitioner. As a theater practitioner, I sing, dance, act, drum, blow fire, walk set, anything you want me to do, I do it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, you know, teaching our children, our children is the way forward. We can't do anything if we teach children the mindset that our predecessors had to hold on to because they had to be safe. Now is not a time to just be safe. Now is the time to fight. You yeah. know? Before I pass it on to Victor, I just want to read a quote that Wendell Man Warren gave at last week's 
episode session, whatever you want to call it. He said this came from Dr. Eric Williams, our first prime minister. For those who don't know, for some reason, um, he said. <laughs> Our ignorance of our history is one of the most damaging things, and it must be corrected. We must become the subjects, not the objects of our stories, and that way we will become, we will not become the playthings of other people. So I just want to say that before I pass it on to Victor Edwards for final comments. Well, I, I would have said that in, in a different way last week, because I would have said yeah. that if we don't write our own plays, if you don't see yeah. our songs, right? You remember I said that last week as well. Yeah. I think that is that that is exactly what Dr. Eric Williams is saying. But I, I want to yeah. take a different kind of perspective here because um anybody ever any one of you went to a totally boys' school? I went to a boys' school. I'm not you know, bad. <laughs> I went to I, I went to St. Benedict's College at a time when St. Benedict's College was getting three passes at GC out of the hundred and something but at the same time you were given naparima and presentation 13 and 12 goals and you were given as like 21. you understand so st Benedict's college is a football school and that's the school i passed for and i never played no football in the school but the school <laughs> had no direction really you know you understand so i was just like a a wild fella fighting breaking beach spending out all my money um going and mop right down on the bypass to reach san fernando and then hope i could reach marbella where i was living at the time so it was a kind of total chaos and then this english woman marlon fresco was her name decided to do drama and put up a notice and i'm not a mother partner michael ramcharan who is now deceased we decided well we're just going for kicks and we go on and we really play the name of the play was the rape of fear helen by stanley french from saint lucia and we went and we read and we had a good time and laugh and kick something and the next thing you know the next day we see our name up on the list to come back to read again so we went back and we said miss you serious she said yes so we started to read the script and rehearse and whatnot and so on then this lady closer to performance now in 1972 i talking about it eh? this lady now telling me i have to come to rehearsals on a sunday like she don't know i have work to do home so i never used to take she on so you know what marlon fresco because i was some i was playing the lead in the play right marlon fresco would turn up at my house sunday morning to pick me up to make sure or she would reach to rehearsals and realize i'm not there in la romaine and come quite back up marble to pick me up to take me to rehearsals and then i begin to understand how important this thing is and my involvement in the play and in that whole drama process they're talking about social reform began to affect the spirit inside of me to bring discipline and understanding beginning to understand the process of the thing and instead of being this wild person in the school i was transformed into somebody who began to think that is what the drama did for me and then to top that off all around that same maybe a little later when i was in form six tickets came to the school i think it was 50 dollars for the ticket then for a Walcott play that was going to be put on, performed at the Naprima Bowl, the joke of Seville. The fellas like Albert Lavo and, and them, for, you know, that, that, that. And I buy, I, I get my, my mother to buy two tickets. And then my mother went to see Joke of Seville at the Naprima Bowl. And it was such a mind blowing experience for me. You understand? I said, you see that? That is something that I have to be involved in. And that was a transformative experience. And those two experiences were the transformative experiences in my life that have me up to the age of 66 now. Still, mm. actively, still actively involved in theater because I keep telling children who interview me for CXC and CSEC and so on. It is that transformative experience that I had that I wish that all of you can have because it was such a spiritually uplifting thing for me 
and the people with whom I work in, in Iri Theatre, I keep stressing to them. You see, when they talk about the teaching aspect of directing, I do a lot of that when I direct because I want people to understand. And as I said to you all last week, I'm working on a new play, on a new script, but I'm still in the process of research. I'm doing the research. I'm trying to create things in my mind so that when I'm when I when I when I interface with them next year, that whole process that I experienced with Marlon Fresco and Shakuntala, uh, Mirage and so on back in 1972 is the same kind of experience. I don't know, maybe something an experience that I am trying to recover for myself. You understand? Or and at the same time wanting to pass that experience on to everybody with whom I come in contact. And because because I have been reformed as a member of a member of this society, the people who I interact with, it is always my objective to be a, a, a transformative person for the community. People may not like how I talk and how I say things and so on, but that, that deep down inside my heart, and people feel that I'm gruff and I'm aggressive and I'm ting ting ting, but deep down in my heart, there's a soft spot. For the whole transformation of the people with whom I interact. And that's my contribution in terms of how theater, from a personal point of view, how theater has transformed me and how my entire my entire effort is ready to, to help to create people and transform people, you know, um, to understanding what the, the role and function of the theater in their lives. That's it. Um, <laughs> well, friend, that was a very powerful testimony, and I think that is the best possible way that we can end tonight's best, episode. Best, best. Um, before we go, what? you have no prizes for me. <laughs> before, <laughs> I would just like to um, give some closing statements as well. Um, I have to say. A, a, a very warm thank you, um, Mr. Edwards, for that um, that testimony. Um, if ever, if ever, I felt um, a sort of um, down moment in this in this whole pandemic situation as a teacher, being home, challenges of returning my students in ability to reach the majority of them, close to all. Um, and I'm sure it's the same with a lot of other teachers. I'm, I'm constantly trying over these past couple months. And having to make the decision to work with one or two, sometimes none. Um, that that is very encouraging, um, because that is that is the drive that is the drive I use while driving down to see just every every day, um, <laughs> <laughs> to, to to deliver that. Um, and and yeah, yeah. Um, I was just told to announce or acknowledge rather the presence of the Best Village Program Manager, Mr. Keon Francis. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> and I hope you really, you know, really <laughs> you entertained and engaged by the conversation that was being had. Yeah. You know, and get some little ideas for Best Village. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> and with that, we have reached the end of our episode. Don't forget to like, follow, and share Soka TV. Zoka TV, Cara Boy, and the Trinidad and Tobago Performing Arts Network. Thank, thank you to our thank panelists. Thank you for Brendan, who had to leave uh, mm -hmm. a bit prematurely for another meeting. Mr. Marvin George, Tanaya Springer. Marvin, say hello for me, please. Who? When yes, Marvin, ah. all of us. When you come off the air, say hello for me, please. <laughs> similarly, similarly here. And I also want to add. Sorry? Ouch. Uh, Oh, we are told we are told the next week that we're going to have a marathon with our creative arts teachers. All right, so tune in for that. Tune in for news on that. Thank you for everyone who have tuned in tonight. This has been a discussion on the theater of oppression, theater of resistance, and what could happen after resistance. What is the resolution? Hope you got some answers. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye.